All right, so we are going to try and get this air conditioning system working today. Uh, as you saw earlier, I put a quick vacuum on it. The manufacturer recommends only pulling about 10 inches on this just to keep oil in the compressor and not risk sucking it out through the lines. Um, so I pulled it up to about 20 because the way our doohickey set up, there's no real control over it. But we are losing about an inch a minute of vacuum. So we are going to put in a can of Pro Seal from EnviroSafe along with their R134 replacement. This is R12 compatible, so we don't have to switch out and flush the mineral oil out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and charge this with a can of the R134 and then a can of the Pro Seal behind it. Then we're gonna crank it up and run it, see what it does. We need to run it for about 30 minutes with this Pro Seal in it to circulate it and get it all the goo and all the good holes. Hopefully it seals. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and charge this. I've got a can tap on this one. And the goo in the good holes. Scientific, baby. <laughs> it's science. Bill Nye would be proud. <laughs> Bill Nye's in jail. <laughs> Why'd be proud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Make sure all of your hose connections are tight. That one's not. It smells good. Now the manufacturer recommends that you actually turn the can upside down like Cam has it in order to install the product into the car. Yep, and I've got both sides open just since we're charging empty right now. Once this kind of stabilizes, going to close the high side. We're going to crank it up and see if the AC kicks on. All right, so that's closed. So it smells like shaving cream almost. Mm. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and crank this up and see what it do. But in first, everything else in after. And neutral. Dropping down to 20, so we need some more. We throw the uh, other in there now. Huh? Do we throw, do we throw the pro seal in it? Yeah, that's what I'm about to. It's got a loose belt, it sounds like. Hope that's that not will happen when you have one belt running all your accessories. So we've got a, a can of Pro Seal on. That actually blows nice and cold. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's at 18 degrees right now, so. Well. We're 
sitting at about 17 pounds on the low side, 200 on the high. It's a little bit low. We'll probably use another can, maybe half a can. We won't want to do that until we make sure we don't. But we don't want to do that until we make sure we don't and we're not losing anything. Yeah. Though. Yeah, so we're just gonna let this run through. This pro seal needs 30 minutes of runtime. So we're just gonna let it cycle for a while. See how it handles it. 56 degrees. I'm using a uh, Syntec infrared thermometer. I actually prefer a small dial gauge to stick down inside the vent for temperature testing, <clears throat> but I uh, can't find ours, so this is the next best thing. About 57 degrees right now. We're running like 35 pounds on the low side now. So that's down around close to where it needs to be. Yeah, it? that's where I want them. That shouldn't cause any problems with freezing up. 54, somewhere around 53, 54. Like I said, if I could find my dial gauge as a normal, yeah. I'd throw that in a hole to check it. I think that EVAP might be a weak. I smell like the shaving cream. So this will be fun for 30 minutes. We get to sit around and just do nothing. Welcome to the fun of AC work. Yep. One hour vacuum. Sit on a bucket. Look at memes. <laughs> All right, I found our problem. Um, while we were running the system, we went ahead and shut it down because we were smelling the, as Cam called it, oh shoot, there's our timer. That we were gonna run this thing for 30 minutes and we stopped it um, because we were smelling a real strong smell of what we considered to smell like aftershave or possibly uh, Barbasol. <laughs> so we shut the system down because of that and it was starting to not cool as well. It was picking up some temperature, but it was still okay. But I was really concerned because I kept smelling that uh, aftershave or Barbasol smell, almost like shaving cream. And we shut it down and I started listening and I can hear, hopefully you can pick it up on the mic, but I can hear a hissing noise coming off of the low pressure fitting on the back side of this evaporator core. One of the things I will say about this system that's really problematic is where it sits. It sits right next to the accelerator pedal. All of your connections are right there and feet can brush across that trying to get down in there to hit the accelerator. Uh, other little things that are just interesting to me is the way there's a kink in the hose for the, for the um, um, condensate to get out of the system. But more importantly, we have a big problem with a lot of mineral spirits coming out of the system. I mean, you can look at my fingers there and you can tell that I am wet with oil just from rubbing the bottom of the case where the uh, condensate line is. So we have an issue there for sure. I don't know if that's coming off of that one fitting that I hear hissing away over there, which is on the low pressure side, or if it's coming from the evaporator core inside of the box. This would require us to do a lot more. And my concern here is we don't have a way to know if this core on this one is even available still, if it is a core issue. Uh, so I'm kind of going to have to talk to the owner to find out where we're at with this. So the only different, the only thing that kept it from going any colder was the fact that it has a, a pressure limiting switch or a temperature limiting switch on it to keep it from icing up. We were at 32.9 degrees out of the vent. So the system actually would work very nicely and blow very coldly going down the road. Um, it's just a problem with that one O-ring. And where that thing is at, I can see why it could be an issue with putting it in. It's just in a bad spot. If you look at what I'm showing you right now, the video is showing the hoses in relation to the gas pedal. Like I talked about just a minute ago, it's going to be an issue. Uh, we don't know if the Pro Seal product works really well because we had the problem <laughs> with the enormous leak underneath the dash. So that doesn't tell us if we have a small leak problem somewhere else that that's gonna seal it up. We ran it for almost 30 minutes, but it was just pissing so much stuff into the interior. It smelled like a shaving cream factory. So we kind of stopped on that. But I do like the EnviroSafe product. The product itself, man, I can't wait to get into that Gran Torino. That thing's gonna be Mac Daddy. Maybe a little bit of Tony Orlando and Dawn and you know, driving down the road in a nice silk shirt. Uh, Bell-bottom pants, some big aviator glasses, and a porn star mustache. That Torino will be Mac Daddy then. It'll be 
everything it can be, maybe more. All right, so this is a flare fitting system. It is not the typical O-ream system like you see out of most of the stuff nowadays. This is probably a fairly old additional AC on this car. Now, I don't know if the Electra, whatever it is, Royale, was a factory style unit for AC for the Thunderbirds. It may have been, but I don't think so because most of the time Ford used their own select air systems for these early cars. R63 Galaxy that we have outside, it has a factory Ford AC system in it. So I took it to a shop around here. A buddy of mine has one and he uh, basically evacuated the system for me while I went to lunch. I don't know what he did. We're just gonna let him do the thing he does. He evacuated all the stuff out of it, all the Freon out of it excuse me, refrigerant out of it. And I came back here and, re and removed the fitting to find out that it was a flare fitting and then put everything back together and have tightened it up, I hope enough. We're um, gonna run a vacuum on it here in a second and see what we get with a vacuum. If it holds a vacuum, that means that that is exactly where our problem was is on that fitting. If it's still dropping vacuum, I'm going to have to go in here and try to tighten that one up a little bit more. And I'm telling you what, there is zero room in there. And my bigger concern is, is that we're going to crack a tube on the evaporator core side of it. And that will be a problem because I don't even know if you can get the evaporator core that this thing has in it. So that's our next move at this point. Ooh, so old. It is well that I don't sit well in these cars because <laughs> I really like the way this yeah. thing looks and feels. Yeah. Except kinda, for this stupid seat. It's like a Ford Miata. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the closest. It's had far too many yeah. steaks yeah. and too much ice cream. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's going to handle like a Miata. No, I don't think no. it's going to happen. All right, so folks, what we've done is, is we fixed that one low pressure fitting. Not, there is just no way I can get a camera up underneath there with me while I'm tightening these things up. What I would probably recommend you do if something like this is going on in your car is if you can pull the knee knocker AC system down and out, you can tighten them out underneath the car a little bit because the way these are, basically all you're doing is running hoses from the interior of the car to the outside of the car. So it's not that bad to go ahead and pull that unit down and move it out of the way. I will say some of the other units, particularly the Ford units are heavy because a lot of the parts on those are made out of solid metal. The motors are metal, the wheels in the uh, squirrel cages are metal, so it's not a light unit to just drop out and move around. This one is about 80% plastic. A lot easier on the back. Um, so we tightened that one fitting up. We lost a little bit. How much did we lose over a, an hour? Uh, three inches in an hour, which with the adapter fittings that we're using, Harbor Freight gauges, it could be anywhere. Acceptable. <laughs> much better, much better. It could be anywhere. It yeah. is not at least hissing now. Yeah, it was an inch in a minute before, um, but now it's it's holding steady, and we don't smell any free. We don't smell any of the refrigerant uh, anywhere inside. We smell a little bit of residual inside, but that's. I think some of that's coming off of what it was doing because yeah. it threw that stuff into the squirrel cages too. Yeah. So. A lot of that's still inside of the AC. Before box. I would come by the wing window and I would smell it right Yeah, away. it was really bad before. Yeah. Um, I will say the one problem you can run into, is, especially on an older system like this, is early Ford systems like this one, they used a compression fitting rather than an O ring fitting, yeah. and that can create an issue for you. So know this when you're doing this is that when you're working with an, uh, a compression fitting, it has to be pretty darn tight. Most of the time, those compression fittings, if they're done rightly, are an aluminum line to a copper uh, fitting on the actual AC evaporator or condenser unit. So you're going to be working with that. Some of them are steel lines as well, but then it becomes a case where the condenser side, which is copper, and the hose side, which is steel, your mesh point or your mush point, I would say, is on the condenser side. Yeah. On this one, it's the other way around. You have copper to aluminum. The aluminum is your mush side. Um, it blows cold. I mean, if you're looking at the numbers I'm showing you right now, you know, those numbers are actually pretty darn decent. You're looking at uh, 42 on an 80 degree day coming out of the vent on that knee knocker. One of the things Cam and I talked about off camera, which is true, is that a knee knocker unit is going to blow cold. Yeah. 
because you are coming directly off of that evaporator core. Yep. So you're not going to run into any kind of problems with that. Um, biggest issue we've had today is we ran the battery now screwing around with it. <laughs> so anytime you run one of these compression fitting systems, I will say in my opinion, they are a little less forgiving on tightening up. They are a little less forgiving on possibly losing the cool or losing the uh, refrigerant just simply because of the way they connect up. These systems like this one will probably run down. But we did. How much did we use on a can on the second um, fitting we after used, we took it to our friend's place and had him discharge the original? We we used eight ounces of this, which is very good. So one can filled this system pretty much completely. Yes. Um, the pressures are about the same. High head pressure doesn't really match up to R134, but that's fine. That's easier on the compressor anyway. He but, said the head pressures on the high side were going to be a little lower. Yeah, a little lower, yeah. Which um, that's good. I mean, like you say, yeah. that's going to save Less the strain on the compressor. Um, um, and this thing, that can be a real problem because what we've got going on with this particular e, car This is, is a single belt. There is no secondary sheaves on any of the other pulleys, so there is no option to run the second belt. Um, the, I wonder if you could even get the, the two sheaf pulleys for a 312, 392, though, for air conditioning, because <laughs> how flipping rare would that enormous be? enormous amount of money, anything is possible. <laughs> Just called Chip Foose. Yeah. He probably knows a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I right. also need to get some, uh, some tape. What I'm showing you right now is one of the earlier shots we did. You can see that the refrigerant lines coming into the evaporator are bare. The, uh, the temperature bulb is bare and basically what that does is that lets it know there's a bulb underneath this refrigerant tape. I've got a, an arrow going to it right now. That bulb is what lets it know that it's possibly freezing up and it'll stop the system from running. It'll shut the compressor off and it will keep the system from freezing the evaporator core up. Um, but in reality those should be wrapped all the way to the rubber hose because the metal is going to sweat and that's going to get on your shoes in this car. Another thing that we're going to do is we are going to probably go in and move the actual evaporator unit to the passenger side just a little bit. It won't be centered up in the car, but right now my friend Alan who owns the car has to snake his foot between the brake pedal, the hoses, and the lines to get to the accelerator pedal just to drive the car, and that's not a good situation, especially if you have to do something in a panic. It's probably the exact reason that line is leaking was leaking. I think, yeah, and I think with well, the way the line's set up, it's on a yeah. T-fitting. Yeah. <laughs> so that some water can indeed get into the interior yeah. to cool your feet. Yeah. I, I guess if you wanted toe a quick cooling. drink. Toe cooling. <laughs> toe cooling. <laughs> the pinky toe. Yeah, yeah. yeah these V-belts could use probably a different belt. Um, this one's pretty small, and it's way down in the pulleys, touching the bottom of the sheaves. Yeah, that's going to create a heat issue, especially on that compressor. Yeah, I think and I just, you could actually burn up and throw a belt pretty quick. I think I just singed my fingers on that. Not going to lie, it's <laughs> that pulley is blazingly hot. <laughs> I'm telling you because it's pulling a lot of as that compressor was squealing at like yeah. 1200 RPM, which tells me a that's the wrong belt for it. B it needs the multiple sheaves we talked about with a single sheave that does a full wrap around the top, about half of that compressor. Yeah. So you know, well, let me get out of here. It's going to be really fun. I'll let you see me getting out of a Thunderbird. I like it when I'm sitting here when I'm not going anywhere, let's say 45 minutes from here. Well, my butt's already falling asleep. What you have to do see is you open the door up very wide and you swing out and you put your feet on the ground and then you stand up. This car is like made for somebody with back problems so that they have to maintain <laughs> posture getting in and out. <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, you burned the baby on the, uh, on the, belt. yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, if it were my car, mm -hmm. I would try to find an underdash, like a hideaway underdash AC system. You're probably going to lose a little bit on performance, yeah. but you're not going to consistently knock your feet into the evaporator lines. Yeah. I think that's what I would do. There's a couple things I'm going to do on, the, on this one as well anyway. I'm going to try to find an, an L fitting for the drain line so that we can just put the drain line straight out where it's not draining alternately up on the floor and <laughs> out to the <laughs> It's evaporative cooling for the inside. This is the mist function. 
Mm, I mean, air conditioning in the mix. Yeah. <laughs> Knee knockers aren't bad. They're not bad. It's not a bad system. It's just in a car this small. That's a lot of unit for this car. Yeah. I mean, if you put the hard top on this thing, you're gonna call. You're gonna get yeah. cold. I mean, I'm down for cold, <laughs> but just the size and the location of it. Now, a couple things I wanted to go over with using this Freon system is if mm -hmm. you're gonna be working with it. Obviously, if you're gonna be working on the car, you'll want to go in and open up your shop yeah. to do it. Run fans on the front of the engine. That'll help pull cool air across the condenser. If you have the right fan shroud on the car and the right uh, clutch fan and everything and it's working right, you should be fine, but it will tend to want to get warm inside of a building because it's just going to pull all that heat up yep. into the top of the rafters and it's just going to get really warm in here. Um, and if you're working with any of these kind of Freon systems, always have a ventilated area. That way you've got plenty of airflow around you and you know it won't cause you any kind of issues. Um, I like the EnviroSafe. I'm kind of excited for us to go out and just get some new O-rings and put them on mm -hmm. the uh, the Gran Torino to get the AC and that thing running. Yeah, for a 134 replacement, it's really good. I mean, it's it was like 43 degrees. Sitting in here at 80 degree day, we're getting 43 degrees yeah. out of the registers. I'm kind of curious to see what it's going to do. And just the volume of it. One, yeah. One can, one which can. is less, I think that's less than a regular can of 134. Yeah. And it does the entire system. It's like 15-something a can. Don't quote me on that. If you're watching yeah. this in 2046, I think when it, everybody else is driving electric cars. <laughs> I think it said 8 ounces of that is uh, equal to 21 ounces of regular 134. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like a 3 to 1 ratio. Yeah. So it's a nice cold running system. I'm digging it. I'm going to probably, I am going to put it in the Grand Torino, and I may be getting some more for me just to put in these other cars, like we've yeah. got to put AC in Logan's Ranchero. I'm really digging the idea of putting it in that car with the AC system in our, our 64 Falcon that we're moving over. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Um, and I guess that's really it. Just a couple little detail items for me to finish up on Alan's car. And like I said, moving the hoses around, I'm going to get some of the um, tape yeah. and, and wrap those. Ideally, like all of your cold side hoses should be taped as well. But I mean, I'm not going to, I don't yeah. think that's, that's going to look bad inside the engine bay. I know you're a performance guy. You could give a crap about how it looks. I just want, don't want it dripping water everywhere. That's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a drag car. I'm not worried about getting water on the track. Oh, I mean, I, I don't go to drag strips. <laughs> drag strips <laughs> require me to have a car that could actually go down the strip in anything of a timely fashion. <laughs> like, hey, look, that old man on yeah. the cane is running faster yeah. than your Mustang. <laughs> For real. It's getting towed by the golf cart. <laughs> golf cart's pulling it, man. <laughs> Better than going into the crowd, though, I guess, with a Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> you did have to go there. The Ford guy, you went there. That's how bad it is with the Ford guy yeah. doing it. Oh, yeah. All right, folks, that's our show for this week. Be sure to be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great weekend. We'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. I don't know which one to look at. There's so many cameras. <laughs>